now we are so done here on this bright and sunny Wednesday morning with these railings yeah when you see them in relationship to this sh to the entire ship you realize what a small little area we were working on here for the last what four days and now that's about three and a half days too much anyway Now, if we check the plans here, there's some of this stuff here that this photo etch has to go on before we can paint it, like, like this ring right here, for instance. Um, let's just peruse through everything and uh, see what we can do. Oh, yesterday I was talking about painting the, this, little, this little antenna thing. Well, I, I was realizing afterwards that we can't paint it until we get this whole part painted first, so... All right, like I say, <clears throat> let's just uh, check through everything here. And as near as I can tell, it doesn't talk about photo etch in 45, except for the railings. And I, I don't want to talk about them anymore. Um, 46 doesn't show any photo etch. Okay, 47, it talks about the ladders. Let, let's just uh, recompose here and we'll talk about the ladders. Okay, now somehow these three pieces are going to go together in step 48. And and this ring, very, very carefully here, something like this is hard to pick up without accidentally bending it. Maybe I should use something a little different. I'm scared to, I'm scared to squeeze it. I'd use a magnet, except a magnet won't work on this. Hey Ron, why don't you just lick the end of your finger and stick it on? Well, I can't do that. All this COVID stuff going on. Do you think I'm crazy? Okay, finally. Okay, so this, this ring, we won't worry about that until we get to step 48 and have to paint this piece after it's all together because I think the best thing to do is to paint this ring after it's glued on. I think it somehow it goes onto this part right here. But like I say, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get to step 48. Also in 48, there's, there's these, these pieces right here. I may as well just leave them in there. Uh, actually, I should have left that ring in there too. Now, about the ladders. Okay. I, uh, I have never used the brass black on ladders like this before. We, we have used it on this type of ladder. And it seemed to work pretty good. But I'd like to try an experiment here today and just see how well will it work on these ladders. Um, you know, is it going to be a case of when I try to bend them in Andy's bender, I'm going to be scraping the, uh, uh, the oxidation off? Uh, because as I mentioned before, it's, I, I've discovered that the brass does not turn black. It just gets a a darker black oxidation on top of it, almost like paint, and it very easily scratches off and you're right back down to the bare brass again, so that's a little bit misleading where they call it brass black because the brass really isn't blackening. Well, I guess the oxidation used to be brass, maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it would have had to have been. Anyway, uh, uh, we're getting into chemistry here and I'm not a chemist. Um, let's, let's put this back where it's safe. Once again, this is another one of those days where I'm not making very good progress. I guess I should have had my stronger glasses on. I noticed in the bottom of the, of the uh, tuna fish tin here that there was a, a mushroom vent. And I'm looking around on the, on the plan here, on the deck, and I'm trying to see where do we plug in another mushroom vent. I didn't remember seeing that. Well, it, it turns out it's not a mushroom vent. It's actually a little square box and it goes over here, it's actually B21. Now, probably a lot of you are thinking, well, Ron, so what? Get on with it. Well, I talk about what I'm thinking about, and I guess I'm just kind of amazed at myself that I did not notice that this was not a mushroom vent. Now, as best I can remember, this little jar here 
is undiluted brass black. Um, I'm 90% sure I did not dilute this down. Uh, the plan is, and I noticed and I found in the past that if I take 50% brass black and 50% water and mix them together, I end up with a better result even though the uh, the blackening takes a little longer, but not that much longer. And, and what I'm planning to do is I'm going to agitate it. Well, well first of all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the time-lapse thing. So while you're watching the time-lapse thing, you're going to notice that it looks like I'm constantly poking at this. Hey, we're used to that. Um, anyway, uh, let's get at it here. Okay, I don't know which is best to uh, dip from first. Do I want to contaminate my water with with brass black or do I want to contaminate my brass black with water? I think probably I would prefer to contaminate the water, so we'll take the brass black first. And we'll just do, uh, see how much 10 drops does. That's not very much, is it? Now I could very easily speed this up here or cut some of this out, but I just know there's people out there trying to count those drops. Be honest, how many of you are actually counting those drops right now? Okay, that was 23, I think. Okay, that's 30 drops. Yeah, unless I made a mistake, that was 30. It's pretty close. Oh, there's no big rush here. I don't think that it's going to make a much of a difference if we uh, don't do it right away here because I do want to take a little bit of time to reset up so that we can look nice and close and see this turning, turning black here. No. I think I'll use a, a little paintbrush to manipulate these around. Now my plan here is to speed the uh, process up so that it probably takes about 10 seconds from start to finish because I know you don't want to be watching this all day long. <clears throat> Excuse me, so uh, I think I got it mixed up here pretty good. I don't think the brass black is going to hurt my green cloth. Okay. Now. You know what? I don't think I've got enough in there. Well, we'll see what happens. What happened? Did I lose it? Okay, let's get those <clears throat> submerged. There, there we go. They're in there. Now I've got to keep moving them around because if I don't, where they one lays on top of the other, it sort of leaves sort of a shadow. I think I'm missing one piece. Let's see, one, two, three. Oh no, there it is right there. Okay, here we go. Now I'm estimating that close to 10 minutes has passed here. See if I can pick these up without 
scratching the oh I can see on the underside it looks I can see the the photo etch you know I am wondering if possibly this photo etch had a coating on it and I should have run these through my ultrasonic cleaner first oh you can see I'm scratching it off there this this is not a good idea this is not a good idea I think I just wasted a lot of time here you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna drop these in my ultrasonic cleaner and, and remove the oxidation that's on there and I'm gonna paint them I'm, I'm just not happy with the way this came out I, I don't know if you can see it or not maybe if I can get the light just right you might be able to see that you can still see the the, the uh, photo etch um, at least I can see it maybe the exposure is uh, too dark and everything looks black there and it, you're thinking oh that looks really good but I, I can see that it's not so I'm just gonna go ahead remove the uh, photo the uh, brass black that I've got on there and uh, yeah, I'm gonna just remove this and paint and paint these. Uh, I think that's it for today's episode, folks. I realize it's kind of short. Thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.